Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Well, welcome to the Concepts of Faith program today. I am so glad you joined us because this is a very special day for me, a very special day in my life because I have a very special guest. My guest today is Patsy Caminetti. Patsy, I'm so glad you're here. I am so glad to be here with you. <laughs> this is wonderful. Well, I just I have to admit, I just shocked her right before we went on the air. And I said, Patsy, we've been friends 47 years. And she went, oh, no. I mean, it's like you can't believe it, can you? It just seemed like it's gone by like that. I know. But what I want to say to you today is don't stay tuned in because we're going to be talking about the things of God the way only Patsy and I can talk to each other. And we've been doing this for all these years. And so I know that God has something for you today. Maybe you have needs in your life. Maybe you have questions. And I just believe the Holy Spirit's going to answer those questions for you. So before I, we just jump in and do what we do, Patsy, I want to just mention that today we're going to talk about whatever the Holy Spirit says, but yes. we're going to talk about her book called For Such a Time as This, Praying in the Last Days. And I picked this book up. And oh my goodness, I was just, I was smacked on every page with revelation from the Holy Spirit. But there was something that I want to tell you about on the back of this book that really, um, that really, uh, I think, defines Patsy and her ministry. It says, Patsy's ministry and life are marked by personal pursuit of God that has inspired many to develop their own real and passionate relationship with God. And that, I think, is just as accurate as we could possibly get. And I know Patsy doesn't like that kind of stuff, but I got to say that to you because it's the truth. And that's one of the things that we've always mm -hmm. talked about every mm -hmm. time we get together. It's like, you know, we're not talking about the weather. No. Nope. Not talking about, like you said earlier, food, the best restaurant or this. I mean, we may not have seen each other for five years, but well, then we barely even said hi. We You're just right. jumped into, into I God. That's right. I opened, <laughs> I picked her up. I opened the door. She got in the car and we just got right into, I mean, we, we just did. jumped right into the things of God. I know. And so um, we met in 1976. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that fateful day in oh, 1976? Yeah. Because <laughs> at Rama they put us in alphabetical order, you know, A, B, C, and your maiden name is Beerman. Yes. My name is Caps. So B is next to C, right? Yes. And so I remember sitting in that room because it was at Rhema, uh -huh. the first day of Rhema, and they didn't have the big campus they have now. No. They had just the administration building in the warehouse. Right. And fortunately, they put us in the administration building, not the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the administration building, and... Patsy was to my left, and we introduced ourselves to each other. And, his, and there it was. There it was. It was one of those God things. So, But then I, the next thing that was in 1979, mm. and I, I, this is what I want to get to. What a wonderful year at Ramah. Mm. There was only one wonderful year at Ramah. But in 1979, and I remember this like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. When God told Brother... Kenneth E. Hagan to start prayer and healing school on the Rama campus. Yes. And I remember there was such a joy. There was. That came. This is so right. And oh, I, yes. I was there when the doors opened. Oh. And you were too. Oh, yes. And so your book talks about praying in the last days. How much do you think that opening that prayer healing school, how much do you think that influenced what you know about prayer? Oh, well, you know, my daddy's a Pentecostal preacher, so we grew up praying, but it was, 
we kind of didn't know what we were doing. We just loved <laughs> God, you know, so you just go at it yeah. and um, hope you hit something out there somewhere. <laughs> but um, I think those years of concentrated prayer, um, which ended up being every day, gave us opportunity for interaction with, with God and tutoring by the Holy Spirit that had we not had the daily experience, um, I don't think we would have learned some things. I don't think we would have been exposed to some things. So <clears throat> it just gave us opportunity to learn. And I think now years later, in reflection, we've come to maybe even better understanding about what we learned back there because we learned things. We came to know things that we didn't even know we were learning. Right. Uh, we were having experiences in God and uh, wow. But it almost became your daily, you were just doing it. Yes, yes. Well, I remember being in those meetings and Brother Hagen on the platform and kneeling down and praying. Mm -hmm. And we'd all begin to pray. And it was like, you know, you talk about people leading in prayer and, and mostly it's, okay, God, we come to you, blah, 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 and everybody's going. And that's yeah. leading in prayer. That's not what we did. Oh, no. It's a different I mean, kind of prayer. I mean, Brother Hagen would get down and call upon God and begin to pray in tongues. And I mean, that spirit of prayer would move out over all of us. And then it was like, it was like he pulled us up, up to where he was praying. And then we were all praying on that same level, which was very powerful in the so spirit. So powerful. And I think for people that are new in the realm of the spirit, um, that kind of setting is really good. You can teach about it by precept, you know, from the word, because the Bible is, has such wonderful things about it. But I think what Brother Hagen did give us is um, what you've described so well. We would get in the spirit and then, you know, you say cup. Well, you don't have to and try to imagine, you just open your eyes and look. Or, you know, books on a shelf or, you know, mm -hmm. they, were, they were things in the spirit that we could all experience together. There were, th there were things in the spirit and it's hard to put words on them. I know. You have to use an example like cup, book. I know. You have, you have to use examples because when you get into the realm, the things in the spirit, or as as real, but more real yes. than the things in the natural. Yes. Yes. So I remember as he would pray and we would enter into the spirit with him. And sometimes he might just say one word over and over. I know. Do you remember that? I know. And so it's sort of like it focused our attention on that. We didn't really know exactly, but we knew the spirit was leading that way. And so we just got to. We got on the train with him. Got on the train with him. Do you remember, you know, he, uh, uh, we got to experience the spontaneity of the spirit too, not the scheduled prayer, but like getting up to, to preach and saying, we've got to pray and we've got to pray now. now. And so, you know, he got on his, he got down and we prayed and what he was praying ended up being almost like transcripted uh, from what Ronald Reagan was saying uh, when he had that assassination attempt on his life. And by the spirit, we stepped in and stood in the gap. But as you said, it brought a whole company of people with him. So rather than just watching Brother Hagen, oh, what a mighty man of God, it, no, we did it corporately. It was beautiful. But you tasted and saw what the Holy Spirit can do with them. Um, you don't wait for Google. You don't wait for the news. You don't wait. You do not wait to be told um, externally these kind of things. You move with the Holy Spirit. 
and you move quickly. And um, I love that experience. Yes. It can I, save people's lives. And it yes. actually saved the life of a person. It was really necessary towards the uh, dismembering or disassembling of the USSR. Yes. So, so really and truly, Brother Hagen and the prayer school and the people that were there getting in the spirit yeah. and beginning to intercede before the assassination yes. took place. Yes, yes averted and diverted what could have been total disaster yes. for the plan of God for this nation. And I think that's something we really need to pay attention to. We can go, and we're going to go into the three platforms of prayer because I yeah. love that. Yeah. But there is a place in God where you don't just go and say, okay, so here's what needs to happen here. And mentally you work it out of how I need to pray for President Reagan or how, you know, God. back when he was in office or how I need to pray for this or how I need to pray for that. So now we're going to formulate a faith prayer. And yeah. I'm not against faith. We no. are we are faith babies and now faith adults. Absolutely. So we believe in faith, but it's not just taking something and going, so, okay, we're going to pray the prayer of faith. This is a spirit led prayer that comes and when you begin to enter into it, the spirit of God takes you to the place you need to pray how to pray. We're talking about praying in the spirit when you're speaking mysteries unto God. And so it's that intervention prayer that comes by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's a different platform of prayer, a different place of prayer. It really is. And you know what, Annette, what I've come to know over the years and knowing different parts of the body of Christ, I have such respect for different you know, they, they've developed different skills in different areas, and we love every part. But what you've identified is a part that we were introduced to mm -hmm. and invited into, not by a man or a ministry, by God. Yeah. You get to work with God. Yes. Oh, on levels that you could have never give yourself. That's right. So, I, I, anyway, I love it. I know. Okay, so this is a okay. really, really good time for us to go into. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. Our talking about the three platforms of prayer that you outline in this book, and, and we can't, don't have time to do the whole thing, but just an overview, because you're going to want to order this book. I'm not kidding. You're going to want to order this book. So you have three platforms of prayer that people pray from, and mm -hmm. you showed it kind of a platform here, platform mm -hmm. up here. And so the first one is out of desperation, which I would say sometimes unbelievers, you know, um, and you may be in that place right now. For all yeah. I know, you may be in the most desperate situation you've ever been and you don't know whether God exists or not. I guarantee you, you call out to God right now and say, God, help me. Yes. God, save me. God, help me. And I guarantee you, God will answer that prayer. But that's a prayer that you pray when you just really don't know. Yeah. You know, you just, it's just, if there is a God, help me. Yeah. But then there's a second platform, and this is where I think most Christians right. are, which is what you outline in your book. And it's someone who believes in God, but does not really recognize their authority. Mm -hmm. And so that results in what we see as a lot of religious begging and pleading. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm down here. Please, God, come down and help mm -hmm. me. I'm begging you. I'm pleading mm -hmm. you with you. But you've been talking about, we've been talking about the third level, which is when you're actually working with God. Yeah. And this is a different level of prayer than you have ever been on before. If you've just gone from, God, I'm begging you, please give me this, please give me that. Those personal yeah. prayers of this other level. And I'm going to, I want to read this. It's when you're working with God, and you let me know if I interpreted this correctly. <laughs> this, is, this is the Annette Cap's interpretation of what you said. Okay. You're working with God, and from this platform, you said the prayer's primary motivation to pray is by unction of the Holy Spirit, not according to the pressures or demands of a crisis. 
Didn't we recently, we, I don't know if you saw this in Australia, but uh, we here in America when there was a man a man playing playing football and he was injured and oh we saw that in Australia serious. and so you know what the whole nation people didn't believe in pray praying were praying because it was a crisis and it was a circumstance mm -hmm. that demanded prayer yes but that is that's that's just from what you see mm -hmm. That's from what you see. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that kind of prayer. It is. It's beautiful. And God answers. Oh, wow. And he did for that young man. Yeah. Miraculously. But in this praying in the last days, yeah. we've got to have more than that. At the beginning of 2020, um, I woke with this term, collaboration of operations very interesting. And I saw operations in the realm of the spirit in the kingdom of light. And they were like gears that had been turning, but they weren't close enough to grab. The teeth weren't, weren't grabbing, but they were getting closer. And then they would grab and then there would be, it would be tremendous function. But the same thing was happening in the kingdom of darkness too all kinds of operations going on in the spirit. And there was, um, it was like there was this great convergence of all kinds of operations, good and bad, were coming together. And um, the reason I, I thought of that is, how do, you, how do you pray about that? Yeah. How do you pray? How do you decipher what can look really bad, but God actually is, it's a setup for something good. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, yeah. you can't touch that in your head. Yeah. You don't, well, for instance, you don't, you don't even know what it is. Right. Right. The, some of these operations are in eternity. Or they're in the realm of the spirit. They haven't manifested, or at least the kingdom of darkness ones have, but the God's, what God is going to do with hasn't. How do you touch that? Well, you can't do it with level two praying. No. Because you're praying out of your head. You've got to have other, you've got to have other intel. <laughs> yeah, and that's not the prayer of petition or the prayer of no. faith you're talking about. No. And those things are, are, are all good. needed for mm -hmm. us, and it, it meets needs in our personal life when we're praying, God, you know, my rent is due. My rent is due. My car payment is due, I, and I need, I need cash. I need help. And you can pray the, go to God and pray the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus and ask to receive that. But we're talking about a different kind of prayer today. There's nothing wrong with that. We have to continue to pray the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. But this is spirit-led prayer. And you're talking about special intel that comes by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And how, do, how, how can we pray that? Do we pray that in tongues? Do we pray that in English? Mm -hmm. Or do we pray it in tongues and interpret in English? Or do we just pray in tongues not knowing what we're praying about? How does that work for you? It ends up being a combination of a combination. Um, he, he, by unction, can give something, a, a scripture, and you can pray from the light of that scripture, even if it doesn't seem to, you know, it doesn't make any difference. You're not going by what's here anyway. You're going by unction, so you pray it. But then you... Pray by the spirit. You can pray by the spirit. Sometimes then the Holy Spirit gives interpretation through a spirit of prophecy, which connects with another verse of scripture, which connects with more praying in tongues. <laughs> I mean, you know, it just it yeah. just keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. It's no wonder that the devil fights speaking in tongues so much. Oh yeah. Because if you don't if you aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, like it's all through the, all through the New Testament, we can go scripture after scripture. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and prophesy. Mm -hmm. It's all through the New Testament. 
But if all we can do is pray in English and pray what we think, Mm -hmm. then we are limited. And really, it's this spirit-led prayer that pushes back the forces of darkness. So true. So true. It is, it is receiving from him, the head of the church, savior of the body, savior of the world, but not just receiving from him, but dispensing him. You dispense that life, you dis- which is greater than death. You dispense light, which is greater than darkness, but you learn to dispense it in prayer. And, um, and it's not an effort. Don't you find that it's not an effort? Just, it's like rivers of living water. That's it. It flows. It is such a river. And it flows until it gets to what Brother Hagen used to call a note of victory. Uh huh. And sometimes you may go a long time. And it's like, okay, I'm through pray- praying about that today by praying in the Spirit. But I'm through with this today. But the next time you go in prayer, it comes back and you've got to push it a little further and a little further. It happens sometimes in stages. Sometimes it happens all at once. Sometimes it happens in stages. Yeah. I'm reminded of, and this is a personal instance, it didn't have anything to do with geopolitical stuff, but the same applies, right? I was in a meeting in California and I was praying, um, getting ready to go down to speak. No, I was going down to another meeting. And so I was praying and I just felt something, but I went ahead and went And then it was like, I've got to go back to the room and pray. It it was just heavy on me. And so I went back to the room and I began to, this is the, where uh, Paul talks about groanings that cannot be uttered with articulate speech. And Mm. it was just a groaning and a praying and a groaning and a praying and a groaning and a praying. And and, and I sense I was praying about somebody in danger. Yeah. And so I just continued and continued and continued until I got a note of victory. Praise the Lord, entered into praise, you know, yeah. all that. Well, come to find out, I just had this sense this is a, <clears throat> a family member. So I called my mother and I said, is everything okay? And she said, well, yes, yeah, sort of. Beverly was in an auto accident with her children Ooh. and the car in front of her uh, there was a bad wreck. The car in front of her burst in flames, several fatalities, and oh. she and the kids were okay. She and the kids were okay, and I knew that's what I was praying that's about. That's what it was. And my niece, Brianna, is sitting right here behind the camera looking at us today, and that involved her life. Wow. She's the executive director of our ministry, and there she sits. Goodness But Annette. God moved through spirit-led prayer praying to intervene in that situation so he can do it through political, which we're going to get into next program. You don't want to miss the next program. We're going to talk about that. But if you haven't received Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer right now. Lord Jesus, I commit my life to you. Come into my heart right now. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. You have redeemed me. You have saved me. And now I call upon you in the name of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with rivers of living water, of the life of God, that it flow through me. Now you just make it up as I go here. You're hearing me. Ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And as he flows through you, begin to praise him and worship him and allow him to give you a new language a new language and I'm going to give you I'm going to send you a pamphlet on three steps to be filled with the Holy Spirit so stay tuned I'll be right back glad you're still here because I want to get this little pamphlet to you called three steps to the infilling of the Holy Spirit it's just a short little pamphlet And it'll tell you what you need to know about how to receive the Holy Spirit. You know, Patsy and I talked about uh, praying in tongues. And a lot of people sometimes say, well, what does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit gives you a language, a heavenly language, that He can pray through you and pray the perfect will of God and speak mysteries in the Spirit. 
It's the most powerful prayer tool that I have, praying in the Holy Spirit by the unction of the Spirit. So you need this pamphlet. If you've just been filled with the Holy Spirit, then it'll give you some information. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, it'll give you some information. Three steps to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now I know today <laughs> with Patsy was a real eye opener for some of you, but these are, the, these are the things that we learned when we were at Rhema with Brother Kenneth e. Hagen Hagen in prayer and healing school. We learned some things that we didn't know. And now that's been passed down to Patsy and I to help you and those who didn't have the opportunity to be there. And honestly, I expect, I expect you to do better. So her book is called For Such a Time as This, Praying in the Last Days by Patsy Caminetti. It's offered $29.24, and we're making it available for an offer of $16 or more, and that includes shipping. So that's a deal. I'm telling you, when I read this book, just almost every page just had something that I had to stop and think about it because Patsy has a place in the Spirit of God that few people have. Some of it came from Brother Hagen. Some of it came passed down from her father, Brother William Behrman, who I know is a fine man of God. But there's some, there's some things in here that this generation needs very badly. And it will give you those three platforms and teach you how to pray from your position of authority in the heavenly kingdom with God. In other words, it reminds me of being on the farm and farmers a lot of times had lots of children so they could help the father farm. Our father needs help and we need to learn how to pray the will of God and to bring these things about on the earth. So some of the chapter titles in here is the spirit and power of Elijah, platforms and prayer, three kinds of kings. And we're gonna go into some of this next time. Don't miss next week. You'll be sorry you did. We're gonna talk about kings and geopolitical situations and how to pray there. And man, I got stuff out of this book that I needed because I had questions. So that's all for $29.24, $16. Call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv. And join us next week for another Concepts of Faith. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.